Hi, today I am talking about the blue badge application process. So if you don't already know, um, you can get a blue badge like this one. Uh, it doesn't usually come with it. I've got a very friendly cat today. It doesn't usually come with narwhal tape on it, but I've just covered up the um, badge number just in case, because you never know. So as you can see, mine expires on the 31st of May. So I've just gone through the process of uh, applying for a new one. So I've had a blue badge for, well, since I was a child now. Um, it usually comes with a clock that looks like this, and you can just adjust the time so that they know what time you arrived. Um, blue badges uh, for use in the UK come with some rules um, and you should gen generally check with your local council to see where and when you can't use them. But generally um, you can usually park for free on streets with parking meters or pay and display machines for as long as you need to. Uh, and disable parking bays on streets for as long as you need to unless there's a sign that says there's a time limit. And you can also park on single or double yellow lines up to three hours providing there's a no providing there's a no loading sign and um, that you're not obstructing like a corner or something like that or a drive or things. Um, with a blue badge you can't just park anywhere there are rules and it's not always free to park um, and usually wherever you do park there will be signs that explain if you need to pay or if you don't need to pay or sometimes you get an extra hour for free if you've already paid to park um, and it's important to know that if you abuse the blue badge, you can be fined up to a thousand pounds. You hear stories all the time of people that have used their dead granny's badge or um, someone else's badge, and you can get into a lot of trouble if you abuse the system, um, as it should be. Uh, you should also know that if you're not in the car, you can't so the other person can't use the blue badge. For example, if my husband goes shopping and I stay at home, he can't use the blue badge, obviously. Um, you can also use the blue badge in any car, so as long as you are in the car or using the car, uh, you can use your disabled space and the blue badge. This includes taxis and hire cars. Uh, so that's a little bit of background information. I will pop the link to uh, the well, where you find blue badges, I'll pop the links down below so you can get some more information. I'll also pop a link for the Citizens Advice Bureau who have some more information about blue badges and how you can apply for them. So as I mentioned before, this is my blue badge. Uh, it looks like this on the front. Um, we'll seem to see if this changes. This little hologram sort of proves it's a genuine one. And if you look on the back, it's got a beautiful picture of me and um, I've covered up my name and the badge number on the back as well. There are some rules on the back. Um, for example, it says here, this badge can only be used by the named badge holder or by a person who has dropped off or is collecting the badge holder from the place where the vehicle is parked. It is a criminal offence for anyone else to use this badge in any other circumstances. Uh, it says... This badge entitles the holder to the special local parking facilities available in the member state concerned. In this case, it is the UK. The badge should be displayed at the front of the vehicle and it needs to be clearly visible so that it can be checked. The badge remains the property of the issuing local authority. If found or not needed anymore, it should be returned to your local authority. So there we go. That's the blue badge. And I should you fall. That is the clock. There we go. So, the process for applying for the badge and the process for renewing the badge are pretty much the same. The system to apply or renew is really easy. You can do it on your phone, you can do it on your laptop, you can do it on a computer, you can do it on an iPad. Uh, it's the same form, it's really easy to follow and recently, I don't know how recently, but they have made it so that you can complete the entire process online and you don't have to go to your local council to do anything. So before you would fill in part of the paperwork online, you would then have to take a photograph, proof of address, proof of benefit into a uh, your local council who would then process that paperwork and send the badge out to you if you were a successful applicant. 
So the Citizens Advice website, again, that will be in the link below, um, will tell you where you're, whether you're automatically eligible for a badge. For example, you're automatically eligible for a blue badge from your local council if you're registered blind, if you get the higher rate of the mobility component of disability living allowance, if you get personal independence payments and scored eight points or more in the moving around area of your assessment, uh, this should be on, if you've got a decision letter, the points that you got for that section will be on the letter. Um, you can also, you're also eligible for a badge if you get war pensioners mobility supplement or if you has, have received a lump sum payment as part of the armed forces compensation scheme and have been certified as having a permanent and substantial disability. So, you're not automatically eligible, but if you have any of the following problems, you may still be able to get a badge, but you might have to fill in an extra application. So, if you have problems walking that are permanent, or if your doctor says those problems are likely to last more than a year. Uh, you can't use your arms, or if you're applying on behalf of a child aged over two who has problems walking, or a child under three who needs to be close to a vehicle because of a health condition. So that's what we need. So this is how I applied for my blue badge. So you can either just google gov.uk or you can type gov.uk straight into the search bar on the top. Uh, I'll pop the link below. This navigates you to the page. Once you're on the page, you can just type in apply for a blue badge. Alternatively, if you just type apply for a blue badge into Google, the same page will come up. And then you'll get this page, apply or renew for a blue badge. It tells you all the bits and pieces you'll need and if there are any costs, that sort of thing. And then you can start your application. So I was applying for myself. You select your local council, just start typing it in and it will come up. And then it just lets you know who your issuing authority is. Uh, if you've already got a badge, you can type in the address for that. Uh, and then you just follow through the questionnaire really. It's really easy, you just click in the boxes. Uh, as you can see, I was already eligible for a blue badge because I had an existing one and I scored eight on the getting around part. So it lets me go straight into the application process. So again, you just follow all the buttons, head through all the questions. It's so easy, it really is easy to navigate. It's really easy to click through each part, um, to type things in the boxes are minimal the writing is really big and um, it's just really easy to navigate through so you pop all the information in answer the questions apparently I answer them really slowly and just keep going through so this bit is really good, this bit is where usually you'd have to go into your local council office but now you can simply upload pictures of or scans of the documentation they need. You can also take your own photo at home, uh, there are rules around the photo, it has to be clear, has to be a picture of your head and shoulders, has to be on a clear background. But this just makes the whole process so much easier. Um, I did this on my phone, so it was really easy just to upload all the bits and pieces. Once you've done all that, you get the declaration at the end, agree to the declaration, and submit your application. I then immediately got an email through to say that my application had been put through to the count my local council and that I would hear from them shortly. So after I had been through the whole application form, I uploaded all the documents that I needed. Um, and I submitted it, I got an email to say that it could take 6 to 12 weeks for my new badge to come through. Um, the email said that they will get in touch with me if they have any further questions or if I'm not eligible. It's very unlikely that I'm not going to be eligible, I've had a blue badge for a very long time now. Um, and I get, I scored 10 in the personal independence payments getting around section. So. It, I'm pretty much a shoe in for my blue band. Um, so as I said, it's a really easy process. Um, and if you are, whether you're applying or renewing, it is the same form. So the first part, like I showed you, uh, checks whether you're eligible or not. And then the second part is the application process. Um, 
it's really easy to follow and if you are entitled to a blue badge it's really worth it and um, it makes things for me so much easier we can park closer to things uh, which is really useful um, I would be entitled to a space a disabled designated disabled space outside my house uh, that no one else would be allowed to park in uh, so the benefits are really good and it's free uh, I don't know if it's free in all councils but in my local council the badge is free uh, it, and that's brilliant um, sometimes we have to pay for parking which is no big deal I've still got to park close sometimes I've got parking for free and that's a bonus um, so it's really worth it. If you're entitled to it, then definitely get one. If you're not sure if you're entitled, then definitely follow the process to see if you are. would highly recommend getting a blue badge if you need one. Before you start the process, uh, you need some documents just that will, A, you'll need some of the documents and B, it'll make it a little bit easier. So you'll need a photo of yourself, uh, ideally on a white or pale background, with just your head and shoulders in the shot so passport style photograph but it doesn't have to be a passport photo which is really helpful and um, you will need a copy of your entitlement to benefits letter so whatever that benefit is whether it's DLA or PIP you'll need a copy of that letter um, to say that you're entitled and you'll also need a copy of the part of the letter that says what your moving around score or your mobility score is uh, so you'll need that and you'll also need something with proof of address um, I use the entitlement to benefits letter but something like a council tax letter uh, is ideal um, and that's all you need really it's pretty easy if you've already got a badge um, you will need the badge number which I said before I've covered up uh, there's a long badge number on the front if you reply if you are applying to renew a badge you will need this badge number on the front uh, so just bring the badge in from the car. We keep my badge in our car all the time, but if I'm going with my parents or I'm going with a friend and we want to park somewhere close, I just pop the badge out of the car and take it with me because it's my badge and I can use it in any car uh, as I choose to. So that's really good. So that hopefully has explained the process and made it a little bit clearer. If you want to get a blue badge or if you're thinking about getting one, um, Hopefully it's made it all a little bit clearer for you. Uh, if you've got any questions, then please feel free to get in touch. I'd love to help if you've got any issues. Um, as always, you can check out all of my posts at www.estellasaurus.co.uk and I'll see you soon. Bye.